Hi. Hello, Maurizio. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome to class. Good, thank you. Nice to see you again. How are you? How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Just stay here at home today. Yeah. We never had a chance to introduce each other. Yeah, I think last time it was a bit rushed, or you came a little bit late, or something like that. Um, yeah. You you said you were from. Um, I'm from Colombia, but I am really living in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And where are you from? Australia, right? Yeah, I'm from Perth. I'm from Perth, Western Australia. Ah, the other side. Yeah. Yes, the other side. The boring side. <laughs> <laughs> Your side is the more lively side. You have Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, you know. Yeah. A lot of cities close to each other. The Gold Coast. The Gold Coast, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So, are you having fun? Yeah, actually, Australia is, is really cool. The people is friendly. Mm -hmm. It's a nice place. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right, well, look, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about myself, you know, and then you can tell me something about you, like, you know, what are your hobbies and what do you do and all that. So, like I said, I'm from Australia, uh, but originally I'm from Bosnia, yeah, from Bosnia. Uh, uh, my parents are Bosnian and Croatian, but most of my life I've spent in Australia. And also, I spent about five years of my youth in Germany. Yeah, so I, uh, it's, I did my school there as well. And then, but currently, I'm living in the UK. Yeah, so I'm living in, in Northern Ireland right now. And I've been here for about a year and a half. And um, before coming here, I spent two years in Egypt teaching English. Yeah, cool. So I was teaching, teaching English in Egypt for a couple of years, and also uh, I was studying there for a little bit. And um, yeah, so some of my hobbies are sports. You know, I really enjoy soccer. Um, you know, and other sports as well. And then uh, you know, technology. I'm really, I'm really into computers. Uh, you know, high tech. Gadgets and all that, anything um, you know, I like to keep up to date with when it comes to technology. And then a bit of history, I don't mind you know, reading up about history, uh, you know, languages, uh, you know, religious studies, comparative religion, and all that as well. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. What about yourself? Uh, do you know, do you know, some another language? Different, yeah, language? yeah, yeah, I speak a few. Um, well, obviously, uh, German, since I spent some time in Germany, so I speak German. And, um, you know, Bosnian, Croatian, you know, Serbian, it's pretty much the same. And, um, and, and Arabic, a bit of Arabic as well. Oh, I'm learning Arabic as well. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, what about you? Are you multilingual? Obviously. <clears throat> you speak um, Spanish, yeah? Yeah, Spanish and English a little bit. Uh, yeah, I like play soccer. I love the soccer. It's the best sport in the world. Yes. I can travel. I, I was traveling the last year in South America, Peru, Argentina, Brazil. It was cool. Wow. Uh, I studied a degree in business, international business. Um, no more. I arrived to Australia two months, three months, around three months ago. Mm -hmm. I'm studying English in a college here and no more. So how long are you planning to stay in Australia? Actually, I have visa until July the next year. Okay. Um, I want to apply for a master here, but I need to improve my English more. I see, yeah. So it all comes down to your English. You have to pass an exam or something, isn't it? An IELTS then, test. Yeah, the yeah. IELTS exam, exactly. That's right, yeah. Before you can do the masters. Well, that's good. I wish you all the best. Hopefully, you, you'll be able to master it, you know, in time. Yeah. To do the masters you know, next year. And, um, yeah, that's, that's really good. And, um, 
So was it quite difficult for you uh, uh, to, to you know, get the paperwork and the documents sorted to go to Australia, to Colombia? Mm, no, not really. So it was quite simple. Yeah? You just had to apply, yeah. fill out some paperwork, and send it off. Yeah, and that's need, it. yeah actually, you need the money. Mm -hmm. uh, no more. This is quite easy. If you need to uh, apply for a visa to Australia, you just need the money. Mm -hmm. And shall you have the money to stay in the country and no more. Oh, cool. And what, what led you to, to go to Australia, if you don't mind me asking? Why didn't you... Or not? I think America would have been closer to you. Actually, I don't know. I don't like the uh, United States. I don't know why it's, the people is very... It's strange, they're very racist. Okay. You know, like so Australia is a multicultural country, mm. the people is friendly. Or my, another option was Canada, but... Canada, yeah. I was going to ask you about Canada. If you, gonna, if you, you want to go there, you have to show too many papers and mm. I don't know, a lot of... Canada is quite strict, yeah. Yeah, it's strict, yeah. You need a strong reason to become mm. to your country, something like that. Oh wow! Like a yeah. wife or son, so yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, it gets a lot more difficult. What about the UK? Did you think about the UK? Yeah, I never play. Yeah. Or I Maybe. in Ireland. You know, Ireland is quite popular. There's a lot of Spanish students that, that come to Ireland. You know, Dublin, and they study here. Yeah, maybe the next. Maybe when I'm finished here in Australia, I f think so. Travel again, maybe UK or Ireland. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's like yeah, I mean Australia has got a lot, of, a lot of opportunities, but it's just so far. You know, I'm surprised that, you know, um, someone from from South America, or Colombia, like yourself, goes all the way to Australia. It's quite a long trip, and um, you know, just surprised why I didn't go to the States or the UK. In Canada, but yeah, it's common, you know. Um, I've never actually yeah, met actually, too, yeah too many people from South America here in Australia. Really, there are a lot of them there. Yeah, from Brazil and Colombia, a lot. Wow. Yeah. So there is like a community. Yeah, they have their own community there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you've gotten um, set. You you settled in. You're like yeah. you're like your home now. That's awesome. Yeah, but the problem is I live in just between Colombians here at home and my English is going down mm. every day. But I just speak Spanish all the time. Yeah. For that reason is... I, I I try to do something different in Colingo. It's good. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good you join Colingo because you speak to uh, you know, native uh, speakers. And you have me, yeah. the Australian. So it's like we're right next to each other. We're neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of Australians. There's another Australian teacher, I think, on here as well. And um, but anyway, that it's good. It's really nice um, that you can join Colingo. You know, I wish you all the best. And um, um, okay, maybe we should start the class. Uh, we have four viewers in the lobby, and maybe somebody else could join us. But anyways, okay, so. Uh, Maurizio, am I pronouncing your name correctly, Maurizio? Maurizio, right. Maurizio, yeah, okay. So intermediate is this level, uh, this this lesson's level, and the interest is history and culture, okay. Um, <clears throat> but mainly we'll focus on the pronunciation skill, yeah. And the pronunciation skill here is trailing off intonation. So trailing off intonation. Uh, if you don't know what this means, it's okay. Have you heard of this before? Do you know what trailing off intonation yeah. means? Trailing off? No. Intonation, I know. But you know trailing. intonation, yeah. Okay, so that's how it's spelled. Trailing off intonation. Um, so, for example, have you ever found yourself speaking and the sentence that you're, you know, saying just simply doesn't go anywhere. You know, maybe you can't find the right words to finish the sentence. Have you ever had that situation? Yep. You know, when, you, when you're speaking and then um, 
like me, for example, now I'm saying something and then um, you sort of get stuck at the end, right? And okay. you sort of you want the other person that you're speaking to maybe to help you, give you some words, yeah. So um, yeah, they complete the sentence. Yeah, to basically complete the sentence. Yeah, this is called trailing off. You're trailing off, yeah. All right. And now we're gonna focus on the intonation. You know what? How to um, for you who you know forgets what to say or doesn't know what to say towards the end of the sentence. And the other person, how the other person should react. You know how they should react to your. Uh, trailing off, you know. So this is what we're going to focus on. Um, so uh, okay, let me start sh screen sharing this with you, and um, we will get straight into it. So yeah, like I said, there are times when um, you are speaking and the sentence simply, you know, goes off into nowhere. You know, there's no end. You don't know what's the ending of the sentence. And this is what we refer to as trailing off intonation. So as an example, so sometimes I start a sentence without really knowing how I'll, um, right, <laughs> so this is it basically, you know. This is a perfect yeah. example, yeah. So sometimes I start a sentence without really knowing how I'll, uh, you know, and then basically a question mark there. So when you're listening to me, you might have an idea of what to say. So you might say something in return. So basically, there are two types. Okay, there are two types of these uh, trailing off intonation. So the first rule, or the the, first, the the rule for the first type, yeah, is basically help me. I can't finish this sentence. Yeah. So. In this case, what, what I just read to you, um, you know, I, I get stuck and I can't finish it, so I'm, I'm asking for your help in a way, you know. So my intonation will be as such that I want you to, you know, say something in re response and help me out, yeah. So this type has a sharp rise in the voice, almost like a question, yeah. So usually, uh, uh. You know, like you can see that I want you to help me. Yeah, so that's a good that's a good clue. That's a good clue for you to. Oh, okay. So he's stuck. Uh, so your your job is to start making suggestions that are logical. Yeah, continuations of the sentence uh, that your friend started. So let's have a look at an example here. All right. So here we go. Your friend, right? Your friend says. So sometimes I start a sentence without really knowing how I'll, uh, and then you you say, finish it, and then your friend says, yes, that's it. Yeah, I mean this is kind of a silly, silly, uh, silly example, but you know what I, you know what the principle is. You know, sometimes you talk about a topic and then you're lost for words. So in this type, I would say. Uh, and then you reply <clears throat> or help me by right, saying finish it. And this, what I just said, finish it has to be a certain way, like a question form. Yeah, right. so you can't just say finish it because that will sound rude. Okay, so here, note your intonation should also be like a question. <clears throat> Like, are you looking for the words "finish it"? Yeah. So this is how you should say to your friend, "finish it." If you use a normal tone, yeah, uh, like "finish it," yeah, that might sound rude or like you know you know it all. You know. So try not to. Uh, uh, sorry, the intonation, the same tone. Yeah, you for example, levels of tones. Yeah. Yeah, if if you would let's say your friend gets stuck, yeah, he's saying this sentence and he he doesn't know how to finish it. So he wants you to help him. And if you say you know the right word that befits his uh, sentence and you for example, here it's finish it and you say it in a normal tone like finish it. Now that sounds rude. 
You shouldn't really say right. that intonation. You should say it like in a question form, like finish it. Okay. Have you ever had this situation? Maybe in 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 Spanish when you're speaking in your native yeah, tongue. Yeah. 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 Of course. So you yeah imagine yeah speaking to a friend of yours uh you know and you get stuck and he says oh finish it, you know it's kind of rude, and Mr. Mr. Know it all you know. So you would want them to say finish it, like sort of suggesting, you know, it's like, a, is it maybe finish it, you know? So this is what you okay. have to keep in mind, yeah, when replying. Uh, so let's practice now a little bit. So you understand the picture, yes, Maurizio? Yeah, I understand. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna uh, practice a little bit. So we have five sentences here. Okay. And okay, let me make it a bit smaller. So in these five sentences, you have to match. On the left side, we have the sentence, the unfinished sentence. And on the right, you have the possible answers or suggestions. Yeah. So you have to match them. They're not necessarily in line, so they're all mixed up. OK, so do you want to try? Do you want to try reading the first sentence? OK. Oh, man, look at. That mistake. Could you had me some? Mm -hmm. Okay, know. that's good. And now, which which answer do you think fits here? Could you hand me some? Uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Have a good look at the other on the right side. Rude. Yeah, I know. But is it rude? Could you hand me hand me and basically could you give me some? Yeah. Could you give me some? Uh, so he's asking for something. Give me some. Rude. But does rude fit here? Mm, no. No. Yeah. You can't give someone rude. Yeah. Uh, World yeah. War Z. That's a movie, mm. right? You know, this is a movie. Okay. No, what about what about C? White out. White out. Do you know what that is? Nope. Why should... White, White out. out. It, it's a it's a correction pen. Ah, I know. You know, it's like a yeah, yeah. you know yeah, yeah. When you, like an eraser, but for. Yeah, the, I know this is the correct white out. Excellent. Yeah. So how would you reply? Okay, read the sentence again, so so it makes uh, it sounds fluent, and then you see. Oh man, look at them! Look, look at that mistake. Could you help me some white out? Yeah, good, good. Yes, white out. Yeah. White so if we had a, if we had another student, then I would uh, you know pair, pair you up with another student, and you know one of you would read the sentence, and the other one would read the answer. But that's good. So you got C. So one is C, white out. Excellent. So what yeah. about the second one? I can't believe that girl, she was just so rude. Yeah. But how do you yeah. say rude? Rude? Yes, that's better. Rude. Yeah, that's yeah. better. It's like you're asking, rude? Your first yeah. rude was kind of rude <laughs> because you yeah. said it in a, in, a, in a normal tone, yeah. So remember, always in a question form. Yeah. Rude. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. Okay, so you got that one as well. So the third one. Uh, review your notes this weekend because on Monday, well, mm, half a test. Mm. Yes, excellent. Yeah, so review your notes this weekend. Review review your notes this weekend because on Monday we'll uh, have a test. Yes, good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Well done. Okay, so the second last one. So I saw that movie last night, the one with Brad Pitt uh, about zombies. Mm, World War Z. Yes. World War, World War Z or World War Z? I World think they Z. call it in, yeah. in American World War Z. Z. All right. Yeah, excellent. So I saw that movie last night, the one with Brad Pitt about zombies. 
Uh, World War Z? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so last one. I'm so tired and so hungry. I think I need um, some food. Yes, good. Yeah, well done. So I'm so tired and so hungry. I think I need um, some food. Yes, I need some food in my belly. <laughs> Excellent, yes, very good. So you get the point, yeah? Well done. Now, there is a second type, okay? Okay, uh, this should be type 2, okay? So the rule for the type 2 is the end, meh, uh, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, you might have the trailing off intonation, uh, but you know the ending doesn't really matter. So you don't really want help. So this type has more of a lilting intonation. So it feels like a list. Yeah, it feels right. a little like a list, like you're making a list of something. You're adding so many things. So you have two options: continue the list in a logical manner to show you understood, or Say something like, I know what you mean, or I know what you mean. So here, let's look at this example. Your friend says, I need to take a vacation, someplace warm, Hawaii, Mexico, Costa Rica, and then you might say Ecuador, the Sahara Desert, and then your, you, your friend answers, like, yeah, advice. yeah, lol, not that warm. Yeah, because you're being kind of uh, funny. Yeah, the, the Sahara Desert. You know, you, your I friend know. asks some place warm. <laughs> so it's like Hawaii, Mexico, Costa Rica, and then you say Ecuador, the, the Sahara Desert, and yes, yeah, so it's been humorous. So the way you reply, you can reply by saying, continue in the same uh, form that your friend was speaking. So listing, yeah, so you're listing. Um, Ecuador, the Sahara Desert, you know, like you keep on counting, right? But note, your intonation should also be like a list, just like I said, yeah? Okay. So we should also think about uh, Ecuador, the Sahara Desert. So if you use normal, a normal tone or sentence int intonation, you might sound rude. You know, just like before, if you say Ecuador, Sahara Desert, you know, if you say it normally, then this one's a bit more trickier, right? Because you, uh, it's not as clear as compared to the question, you know, that we had before the question uh, intonation. Uh, but still, as long as you make it clear that you're sort of adding or you're lilting, you know, like Ecuador, the Sahara Desert. Okay, so this is the main point. Um, okay, so let's practice a little bit more before we move on to the article. So can you think of one, um, think of any sentence where you have to, uh, you know, similar to this one. Um, and then you sort of stop towards the end, you I know. Need, so you, I need, yeah? It's like uh, I need something to make a dinner, mm -hmm. like eggs, milk, um, I don't know. The other part, yeah. Ah, yeah. So I would say, ah, I know what you mean. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, or I could, what else could I say to you now? It's like I, if I want to make a cake, I need uh, sugar, milk, water, eggs. Um, okay, and now I don't know pre pretend that you're me. What would you say to add, you know, on top of that? Sorry? Yeah, pretend now that you are me yep. and you want to add All on right. top of that what you just said. Um, and I don't know more. What else do you need? <laughs> Another ingredient. <laughs> butter. <laughs> butter, yeah. Yeah, butter, butter or. Um, yeah. Or some I don't know. I'm not a chef. Yeah. I don't, I don't cook or bake. <laughs> so, but you get the point. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, 
so okay, let me let me uh, create a sentence, and then you can sort of um, you know add as the other person. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's think of one. Hmm. Um, okay, let's say I'm, I'm looking, uh, I don't know, I, I want to get, I don't know, a dog as a pet. I'm looking to buy a nice dog, yeah? So, um, you know, I'd really like to have a nice dog, you know, uh, who's friendly, uh, you know, doesn't make a lot of trouble. Um, okay, so this is where you come in. Like I don't know. Quiet is. Yeah. Okay. So think of two. Think of two things at least, so you can add them. Quiet. Um. Friendly. It's like no noisy. Noisy is quiet. Uh, right? Yes. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet. Friendly and not bite. Yeah, not aggressive. Good, good. Aggressive. Yeah, right. Excellent. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, okay, let's think of another one. Um, all right. Let's say I'm, I'm, um, me and you were best buddies. Yeah, we're friends, and I'm looking for a life partner. You know, I'm I'm trying to get married. You know, and I am looking for for a girl. You know, and so I'm asking for your. I'm just having a conversation, like a man to man conversation. So um, you know, I'm I'm trying to find a girl that's, you know, that's that's uh, you know beautiful on the inside and out. You know, she's uh, smart. Um, and beauty. Um, elegant. Don't talk too much. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't talk. Yeah, because it doesn't talk too much or don't talk too much. Yeah, or does doesn't talk too much. One that doesn't talk yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good, good. <laughs> Excellent. Very good points. Yeah, that's good. You see, you get it now. So someone that's yeah doesn't talk too much, she's, she's friendly, you know, will uh, respect you, yeah, excellent. All right, well done, Moritz, you've done really well. So, okay, are there any questions about these at all? Mm, nope. All clear, no, yeah? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, good. So basically, you know, with this second type, uh, the ending doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, you know, so when I'm, you know, when you hear a, your friend giving you this sentence, um, you know, basically, you know, either two ways of there, there are two ways to reply. Either okay, I know what you mean. You know, like what I'm saying, I need a girl that's you know, fun, smart, you know, beautiful. Uh, so you can say, I know what you mean. Yes, I get what you mean. Or you can just add on top of that and continue listing. Yeah. Yeah, intelligent. Uh, you know, doesn't talk too much, and so on. So those two two ways of answering there. Yeah? And then the first type was when yeah. you all almost like get stuck, remember? And you, you need help. Yeah. Yeah. So you want your friend to help you. Yeah. So you you can't finish the sentence. I don't. Know, you have a blackout or something. So this type uh, has a sharp rise in the voice. Yeah. So almost like a question. So, you know, sometimes I start a sentence without really knowing how I'll, um, and then you would say, finish it, and this is important, you, you answer, or you help your friend by, like, questioning, you know, like a nice suggestion, finishing, finishing it, or finish it, yeah, okay, so that's okay. the two things to keep in mind. All right, so let's do the article, here we go, I'm going to give you the link. In the Colingo chat, so you can open it if you like in your own window. Yeah, but the problem I'm using my mobile phone. Oh, I you can't. Oh, okay. Can you see what I'm sharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the good. So just yeah, the yeah. Inca, excellent. 
as long as you can see it, then I'm happy. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the Inca, culture and civilization of South America. Yeah. Uh, do you know much about the Inca? Have you done this in history back mm. in school? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Mm. Okay, yeah. so let's read about it. Let's see what they say. So the Inca were a South American people who controlled a large empire that stretched along the Pacific coast from Ecuador to northern Chile. The Inca dynasty was founded at about 1200 AD and lasted until the end of the 16th century when the Spanish conquerors came to South America. The capital city of the Incan Empire was Cusco, which was located in the Andes Mountains in uh, today's Peru. What is left of the Inca civilization is scattered over the highlands of the Andes. The descendants of the Inca are, all, are, are mostly peasants who make up about half of Peru's population. Okay, this is where it's located, so pretty much the western coast, top of the yeah. western coast of um, <clears throat> South America. So they lived in the central part of the Andes Mountains. Okay, so let's keep going. Society and culture. There were two classes in Inca society, the ruling classes and the peasants. The emperor was called the Inca or Sapa Inca. He ate from gold dishes and never wore the same clothes twice. Like the pharaohs of Egypt, he took his own sister as queen. The noblemen came from the capital Cusco and helped the emperor govern the land. Most people were farmers who produced their own food and clothes. The main crops were corn, tomatoes, squash and sweet potatoes, which the Inca were first to produce. They also raised guinea pigs, ducks and dogs. One of the most important animals was the uh, llama. Uh, it, it provided the peasants with wool and it could carry heavy loads as well. The Inca spoke uh, the Quechua language. Uh, they couldn't write, but they used uh, uh, quipus, uh, which were string uh, strings with strings with. I don't know why they're putting it together, it's two words. Strings with a system of knots attached to them. That's how they recorded their harvest. The Inca were very skillful in making handicrafts. Women were excellent weavers. They wove clo uh, cloth into tunics. Men were great metal workers. They knew how to extract metal from ore by heating the melting by heating and melting it. Then the metals were molded into different shapes to make weapons and other tools. The Inca also produced pottery and made musical instruments such as flutes. <coughs> the Inca were great construction workers and architects. They built a large network of roads throughout the empire, as well as tunnels and suspension bridges that crossed narrow mountain valleys. In Cusco, the Inca built massive walls made of huge stones. Some were more than seven meters high and weighed many tons. Even today, centuries later, the stones fit together so well that you can't even put a knife blade between them. The Inca worshipped gods of nature, the sun, the earth, or thunder. Um, they sacrificed humans and animals. People also worshipped their ancestors and kept mummies of some of them. The Inca created a calendar by looking at the movements of the sun and the moon. Harvest feasts were uh, celebrated in May. Planting rituals were held in August daily life. When the Inca got up in the morning, they didn't have to get uh, dressed because they slept in their clothes. Women wore long gowns with a sash at the waist. Men wore 
uh, loin cloths and shirts without sleeves. Both men and women wore sandals. The average house had only one room made out of stone or brick. Normally it had a um, thatched roof. There were no beds or mattresses, so the whole family had to sleep on the floor. The Inca lived in small villages. Even Cusco, the capital, was not a very large city. History of the Incan Empire. The history of the Inca is mainly known from stories that have been passed down and from rec records made, uh, made after the Spanish conquered the empire. Starting in the 13th century, the Inca began conquering land and the empire began, became bigger and bigger. 100 years later, it was at the height of its power. In the 16th century, the Incan Empire became weaker when a fight broke out between two of the ruler's sons. They both claimed the throne and wanted to succeed their father. When the Spanish explorer Francisco Pizarro came, uh, he defeated the Inca and brought the empire <clears throat> under Spanish rule. Memories of the Incan Empire still remain alive today. Although they were oppressed in the centuries that followed, today's government is doing many things to improve the life of the Inca and to make their culture more popular. Uh, Quechua became an official language and a portrait of a famous Inca king is now on a Peruvian banknote. Okay, the lost Inca city. Explorers have found ruins of a lost city on a peak in the Andes Mountains of Peru. They think the site belonged to the Inca who ruled the region more than 500 years ago. The ruins are on a mountain called um, Quero Victoria in a very remote region of Peru. By the way, this should be one word. Uh, this area was the place where the Inca retreated to um, when the Spanish conqueror Pizarro came in the 16th century. Local people have known Quero Victoria for a long time, but they didn't know what it was. <clears throat> a British photographer went there with a team of archaeologists in 2001. The team had, a hi had to hike and climb for four days to reach the site from the nearest road. Some of the ruins are 4,500 meters above sea level. When they got there, they found storehouses, courtyards, roads, terraces, and many other stone buildings. Archaeologists think that the Inca chose the place for two reasons. It was near important silver mines, and it gave the people a great view of the mountains. The Inca may also have gone there to observe the sun and the moon from a perfect spot. The explorers hope to find out when the lost city was built and how long the Inca lived there. So this is a lovely picture of the location. It's really high. Imagine how they would have built this small city. Yeah, Machu Picchu. Beautiful, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, it's Machu Picchu, yeah. Exactly. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Yeah, I was there the last year. Oh. Around, around two years ago, yeah. What's it like? What's it like? Well, it's fantastic. It's amazing. There are too many people overseas there. So there are a lot of uh, tourists, yeah? Tourists, yeah, right. Mm, I'd love to go there. That's pretty mm. cool. So, did you find any um, any vocabulary which you didn't understand? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, but I don't remember. No. Yes, okay, let's go through some like, of the because like remote. I think so, but remote is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do they say here? Remote. Here we go. It's something very far away from where people live. Like Perth is a remote ah. city, for example. Perth yeah, because it's a very similar word in Spanish. Yeah, yeah really? it's the same meaning. Yeah, it's the same meaning. Oh, in the Spanish, okay. it's something like remoto. Yeah, I know. Ah, so it comes from the same okay. origin. That's yeah. good. That's 
Uh, remote can also mean like a remote control, yeah, for the TV. Yeah. Okay, uh, but in this yeah, but, case, but in the te in the text was uh, not together. It was re and mode. Yeah, that was a mistake. It, it's a typo. It should ah, be like okay. this. It's one word. Yeah. Remote. Ah, okay. When something is remote, it means that something is far away from where people live. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's have a look. Let me go through some of these words. So we have although, you know, while um, ancestor, member of the family who lived a long time ago, archaeologist, a person who studies old civilization, yeah. I think you know that. Um, okay, I'm just going to keep, I think all of them are quite a conquer, uh, is to take control of a country. Yeah. Courtyard. Courtyard is an open space. That has buildings around it. Crop. Crop, yeah, that's food plants that are grown by farmers. Okay. Yeah, so when farmers are growing food, you call it crop. <clears throat> Descendant, someone who is a relative or person or family who lived a long time ago. Um, dynasty, family of kings who have ruled for many years. To extract is to take out. To govern is to rule. Gown. A gown is a long dress. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Handicraft, something that someone makes with their hands. Or harvest feast, meal that people had in a long uh, had in a long time ago. When they harvested their crops. Um, a knot, a piece of string and rope are twisted together. You know, sometimes when you tie your shoelace and you, you make a knot, and then it takes you forever to undo the knot. Okay. Um, loin cloth, a piece of cloth that men wear to cover their sexual organs. So it's like underwear in a way, but back in those days, you know, it was shaped differently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, melt, you know, is to make something very hot, so that it becomes thin. Mold. To mold something is to form something. So when when uh, you know metal is being uh, melted, you can mold it to form knives and swords and whatever tools you want. Yeah. Nobleman, a man who is a member of the highest social class. Oppressed to treat people very badly or rock that has metal in it. <clears throat> peak is the highest point of a mountain. Yeah? The peak of a mountain. A peasant is a poor farmer. Yeah, a poor farmer is a peasant. And pottery is um, is an object made of baked clay. Then raise. Baked, raise. I don't know what is baked clay. Oh, baked clay. Yeah, bake is you know when you're baking a cake, but clay, you know. Um, uh, for example, sometimes we have pots, you know, which are made out of clay. Clay is like mud. Like what? Mud. You know Sorry? what mud is? Like soft earth. Mud. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? So you use clay to make pots, uh, especially in the olden days, you know, to make a pot uh, to eat food out of or to drink out of. So they used to bake or cook, right? Baking is a cooking clay. Yeah, to make a nice pot, which we call pottery. Okay. okay. Uh, raise, in this case, means to look after animals and use them as food. Uh, retreat, to, ma uh, to move back. Uh, ruin, ruin is a part of a building that is left over. Yeah. Yeah, so that picture that we see, those are ruins, yeah? No one lives there anymore. It's just part of a building that's left over. Uh, to sacrifice when you offer something to God in a religious act. Sash, a kind of a belt. 
scattered means uh, spread over a big area, something which is spread over. Mm, quite a lot here. Okay, site is a location, a place. To squash a vegetable that looks, oh, actually this is a vegetable that looks like a pumpkin. Oh, that's a squash. So not the verb squash, you know, you don't squash something, but this is a vegetable. Um, a squash is like a sport? Another no, squash? Uh, no, yeah, I think... Uh, this context is different, right? Yeah, it's different context. Squash is a sport yeah. as well. It's a vegetable here. Yeah, it's a type of vegetable. But squash also is like a tennis. Yes, that's right. You have squash. You know, you play it indoor and you're hitting a ball against yeah, the wall. Yeah, that's squash. Yeah. Okay. Um, suspension bridge, a bridge that hangs from strong steel ropes fixed to towers. A terrace is a flat place on a mountain. Thatched roof. Roof made of dry grass or leaves. Yeah? And the throne, a special chair that a king or queen sits in. Tunic. A long piece of clothing that people wore long ago. So this is a, an old... Um, yeah, like a dress. Yeah, some sort of long piece of clothing on the dress, I don't know. Um, waist, the narrow part of your body, the waist, around your waist. And weaver, a person uh, who makes cloth. And that's it. I think the others are pretty simple. Okay? Okay. Yeah, there's quite a lot of vocab here. So, any questions? Any other questions about this? Mm, no. Okay, let's see. Good. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll ask you a few, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so um, so just to see, you know, about the article. So when when was the Inca dynasty founded? And until when has it lasted? We founded in twelve thousand AD. Yes, excellent. The Inca dynasty was founded twelve thousand AD, and it lasted. Century. Yeah, sixteenth century. Excellent. And it lasts up to the end of the 16th century. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more, then I'll, I'll, I'll assess you quickly. So what have explorers found? What, what did the explorers find? Let's see, what is that? I think there were those British explorers they spoke about, right? Ah, here we go. Mm. So, what did the explorers find? Mm. Uh, the Inca, the lost Inca city. Yes, good. And where is it located? In Peru. It's a remote, like yes. town in Peru. Cusco, yeah. I don't know. Yes, where exactly? Mm. I don't know. Can you see the first line? What is the sound of the first line? Yeah, but now no. I saw the picture of the other guy. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, so he was on the on a peak. In the Andes yeah, mountain. Yeah. Yeah, correct. But the brother, I only listen to your voice first. Okay. I know. It's okay. No. All right. So. All right. So. 
Okay, that's good. The Andes so, and Mountain in Peru, yeah. That's right, excellent. So, uh, okay, now I'm going to give you a quick... Uh, let's see. Mm, so, let's practice the grammar a little bit. So, All right. I want you to create sentences now using a word that I give you. Okay? Okay. Uh, and then, you know, try to act like you forgot how to, you know, just like the examples that we did before. So, all right, um, your first word is apples. So form a sentence with apples, and then use the, the training off intonation. Mm. Apples, <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the exercise. Like um, the first example, the the complete sentence. Yes, yes. So use apples now in, in this case. So for example, if I say um, uh, my if I say car, right? So then I would make a sentence saying my car stopped yesterday because I ran out of um, right. So you do the same thing with apples now. So think of a sentence. How you, you know. like I, I I bought some apples in the supermarket, but I I, I don't know. I couldn't buy some apples in the supermarket because I didn't have enough. Ah, good enough. Um, okay. Now, how would your friend reply to you? What would you say? Of money. Yes, perfect. Well yeah. done. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. So I was I wanted to buy some apples yesterday, but I didn't have enough um, money. Yes. Money. Yeah. Well done. Excellent. All right. That's good. That's good. I think you understand this, so there's no need to go on anymore. Uh, well done, Mauricio. No, you've done really well. I'm really proud of you. Uh, this is the first time you've done this, right? This trade yeah, off. Right. Excellent. You've done really yeah. well. You should be proud of yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's it. Any other questions before I let you go? Mm, nope. No? Okay, that's it then. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I'm going to go and prepare the next class. So I'll see you soon. Okay, thank you. Catch you later. Okay. Right, catch you later, Maritza. Yeah. Bye bye. Ah, uh, comments. Hello, Ahmed. Hello. Ahmed, Ahmed, can you hear me? There's another student that joined. I just want to... Hello? Yes, can you... Hello, welcome. Hello, yeah. Ahmed. Hello? Yes, welcome. Nice to see you. Welcome, Mr. I'm uh, sorry about that. I have bring my uh, headphone and uh, I can't. It's okay, uh, but just to let you know, the class is finished now. This this class is over, so uh -huh. um, uh, there's another class that's going to start now. So because you joined a little bit late, uh, so if you want, you can join the other class, and then now uh, we can we can talk there. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Because this class is finished I... now. Okay. Okay. See you later. Okay. See you in another class. Okay. Bye. Bye.